Nancy, welcome. I'm going to give it just another minute or so, see if others get on before I dive in. Hi, Don. Ooh, two, two winners, yay. Perfect timing too, with holiday shopping. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, about one more minute. We'll get started. <laughs> Might be your lucky night, Missy. I am not traveling for Thanksgiving. I was just going to mumble on about that in a little bit when I'm working about my Thanksgiving this year. So I'll go into it a little bit later. <laughs> I feel like if I'm working in silence over there, it's kind of boring. So I try to save some conversation for over there. But, um,. Welcome, Joyce. Excited, your first one. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. That's my little donut. You can, uh, there's actually a tutorial for that um, on my blog. If you check that out, you can like type in the search bar. Uh, just type in donut and several things will pop up. I love to do things with donuts. They're just cute. So, uh, but we'll get started. Um, as more people come in, that'll be great. Uh, but some of you have already seen, uh, tonight we are going to draw two winners for $25 online shopping. And ThermaWeb this week right now has 30% off most of their items. So go check that out. Um, and free shipping after I think $50. So that's even more awesome. Um, but for those who this is your first one, my name is Julia and I am one of the educational designers for ThermaWeb um, on their fabric side. And I, I've mentioned just earlier, I have a blog called Inflorescence Designs and you can check that out. I put my ThermaWeb projects there as well as um, additional projects, free quilt blocks, other projects. Um, I do blog hops and all sorts of things like that. So um, I do this spiel every time, but as you can see, I have two uh, cameras. One, the one I'm looking at right now, my laptop, which is at my sewing space, and I have one over at my ironing workspace. And tonight, a lot of it's actually gonna be happening over at the ironing space. So I won't see if there is any questions um, unless I come to sit down. So if you have a question, um, awesome. Dawn over here will try to answer it if she can. And if not, I will go back and try to read those comments and answer any questions um, or comments. So we're going to get started. I'm gonna move over to the other workspace and let's begin. Okay, so the picture really doesn't do it justice, but this is what we are recreating tonight. It is a awesome three-dimensional fabric ornament. And that is, if you can see it, it is sparkly. We are using glitter dust again. We used that last month and I have fallen in love with it. I have used it now on several projects. Um, this being the latest. So, we set that aside. And the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, the template. So for this ornament, you're going to need this template, which you can find on the blog. And the link is in the description for the live tonight. And for the main piece, 
so this piece right here, you're going to need to cut out 12. Now I gave you a template. However, if you have um, like a die cutter, on the blog, it tells you what sizes these are. Like this is a four and a half inch circle. Our interfacing, you'll need six. You This is a four inch circle. And then our applique piece is a three and a half inch and you need six of those. So we're gonna get started. And I've just like with most of my lives, a lot of this is already done because I don't want you sitting here watching me cutting out circles all night. <laughs> so, but we're gonna do one circle. So I'm using just a piece of scrap. This is Heat and Bond Light. Um, this is sewable, and that's what we'll be doing tonight. We'll be sewing applique with this. If you don't want to do any sewing for applique purposes, you can use their Ultra Hold. This one is a no sew. But tonight I'm using the purple. And to simply do it, I'm just gonna trace this so I know what I'm gonna cut and what I'm gonna fuse. Just a rough, a rough circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just gonna trim this out. Ooh, cut a little close there. And I've lost my fabric. It must have fallen on the ground. One moment. Okay, I'm gonna cut out another piece. So this fabric I'm using is actually designed by another one of ThermaWeb's fabric des educational designers. Her name's Jennifer Long, and this is from her fabric line, Silent Night, and it's beautiful. So you're going to fuse this side to the wrong side of your fabric. Oh my gosh, it's right here. Wow. <laughs> I did not see that. <laughs> if you could see my face right now, it is as red as my scissors right here. So I'm gonna let that cool for just a moment. Don't wanna cut into it until it's cool. Feels really good, actually. My uh, room where I have all this tends to be a little bit on the cool side. So this feels really good on my hands. All right, so we will cut this out. And the best way for this project is to just kind of do like an assembly line with each of these steps that I'm gonna show you tonight. Or like chain, chain sewing is what it's called. Okay, And there's our circle. So what we're gonna do next is I have already got the other circles cut out just so that you don't have to watch me cut them out for each thing. So for each ornament piece, so each one of these is a separate piece, you need two of the four and a half inch circle one applique circle, and one interfacing. But right now, we're gonna put that away because we only need these three. Now for the interfacing, you have two options. I went with the Stitch and Sew um, fleece. Uh, it, it does not have any adhesive. So we're gonna be using basting adhesive. I chose this because it's what I had in the scrap pile. This is a great scrap buster. It uses small pieces, um, but you can also use heat and bond fusible fleece and just fuse it with your iron. And right now I'm shaking up my basting adhesive. We'll use that in a second. 
first thing we're going to do is we're going to peel the backing and we're going to fuse it into the center as best center as we can of our piece. And then we're going to flip it over and I already got this ready. So we're going to fuse, excuse me, we're going to baste it. We're going to put a little bit on our fleece and baste it to here. I'm going to spray it off camera so I can do it in my box. I have a little box here so I don't get it everywhere. Okay. And just center that like so. And as I said earlier, assembly line you can do all six. This makes, there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can do all these at one time. So what we're gonna do next is if you're using the heat and bond light, which is the sewable kind, we're going to need to applique somehow. So in this one, I chose to do a close zigzag. You can do just a straight stitch around just somehow joining the, those pieces together. For this one I chose to do, I'm going to be doing like a small blanket stitch. So I'm gonna move back over to the sewing area and stitch that up. Here it is, simple blanket stitch. Cut that. And I made sure to put this on before I did the applique. Um, it gives it substance. If you've done applique with just fabric on fabric, it can pucker and adding this as an extra structure to it makes it really nice sews up beautifully so what we're going to do next is we are going to layer our other circle that we have we're going to layer it right side together with that I'm actually going to flip it over I'm going to pin the two together because what we're going to do next is we are going to so with a quarter of an inch all the way around that's right all the way around no leaving no gaps we're going to stitch all the way around
welcome Marianne. It is a beautiful ornament. I really like how this one's going to turn out. So I'm doing just the opposite color from the one that's in the picture and it's going to look so pretty. You're going to see here in just a couple moments what it's going to look like. All right. So there it is. I sewed all the way around and if you've not done sewing like this before, you might be wondering, well, it's now all encased. What are we going to do? So we are going to fold it in half and kind of finger crease to find where our center is. There's our center. And I know this is scary. We're going to rip a slit in this. So make sure you don't catch the front when you insert your seam ripper or small pair of scissors and rip that open. So we're gonna create a small slit right down the center. Like that, I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. It would probably make itself bigger anyway as I try to turn it right side out. And once you've done that, you're gonna turn it right side out and press out the seams and press it with your iron. And don't worry, this will be hidden in the whole process. And I just like to fold those over just a little bit. And there it is. So you need to know where your fold is because actually we are going to fold this in half and that is how it disappears. It is going to be hidden within the fold. So you're going to take your little, kind of looks like a pancake and you're gonna fold it in half and it's gonna look like a taco. And you'll need to find the center Of your circle and I can tell you right now it is one and seven eighth of an inch over so we've got one and then right here this that little tick mark right by the two is one and seven eighths of an inch And this will be the last thing I do with the sewing machine because the rest of it is hand sewn. Sounds scary, but it's not. And as you can see, once we sew it, we're going to actually sew right along here. And when we sew it, you, you don't even see that slit anymore. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to reinforce right here in the beginning and reinforce at the end. You're just gonna sew a straight line. Your looks like a little taco. I see that I see the comment of perfect for around kids and pets. Um, I have a new kitten who we made a cat toy for several months ago. She's still a kitten and she's still trying to, you know, she's trying to climb. We have the tree up. And we kept it up for a few days with nothing on it. And she uh, thought she was the bee's knees, just the wild cat climbing the tree. So these are great. They won't break. And here we have it, our little taco shape with our line sewn. 
So you'll want to make six of these. And you're in luck. I already made the rest of them. So we have our six little, they almost look like, I, today I made pierogies. They look kind of like pierogies. <laughs> Actually going to set this aside. We won't need the iron anymore. Gives me a little bit extra space without the potential of burning myself. We'll save that for tomorrow when I'm cooking. <laughs> so once you've got your six pieces constructed, you will want to layer them one on top of the other and clip them just on the top and bottom. Like that. Do you want to see the real magic? Now, before we're going to stitch this right here, but before I do that, this is just so much fun. See how it opens up into this beautiful flower bell shape, beautiful thing. But before we get to that, we have to first stitch these together, and then we're going to come and tie it together to form that. And if you've been on my live shows before, you know my love of upholstery thread. <laughs> it is my favorite. I always break regular thread. So I've already got one. It's already knotted. And I'm going to insert the needle in through the back of each of these. And it might be easier to do the needle through them if they weren't pinned, but I like to clip them so that I know that they are aligned. And then this is where I will bring it back through the first one. And it's going to, this is where I will tie it off once I get them closed. This just gives it a little extra reinforcement in the center so that they stay closed. Use the, my ironing board as a, Thing. Usually when I hand sew, I use my body a lot. So being on the camera, it's a little bit actually more challenging to stitch it in place without holding it up against my chest, which is where I usually use thing, use to, where'd it go? So I'm just going back and forth in between the first and last one a couple times and then I'll tie it off. And because it's the upholstery thread, I only went through the other ones just once. This stuff will hold it. We'll connect it to a pin. One 
more time. Hope I keep getting stuck on those clips. All right. This will be hidden in the center, so just clip. Okay. So now that we've got our basic shape, next comes the tedious, but it's really nice and enjoyable to do. Sit down, watch some TV part. We are going to connect all these. So on this one, you can see each of these has a connection point. This is already connected. These are strictly ornamental. Those don't even need to be there. Up here, these little seed beads, that is what is holding this ornament open. So essentially everywhere I have a clip, except I'm missing a clip right here, which is, which is where I brought them together. So that is the next step we're going to do. So I'm going to bring over my board with my beads. And then I'm going to start with the one I've got started, which I already tied a knot. And we'll just start where I don't have any clips right now. And you can decide, do you want it to be really high? You can bring it down further. The further down you go, the wider the opening of these and the smaller the opening of your pretty decorative. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna say about like a finger, finger down, which is probably about three quarters of an inch. And I always start on the inside so that I'm not, so that my knot gets hidden. Cause that's gonna get hidden once I Come back around if I don't lose my needle off my string. So I go one time around to, to secure it and then I will grab a seed bead and I just realize this is the wrong needle. It will not make it through that. Just double checking, goes through that one. So you put your bead on. I go around one more time and then I tie it off. When I tie it off, I will just go back and forth one or two times, little knot. And then I did this last time and someone thought it was clever. Some of you may know the trick. You find a spot really close to where you just came out and you kind of go in between the fabric layers, poke it through. And then you pull just slightly and snip it and then you're thread is now hidden inside. And I'm gonna get a bigger piece. That one's short, too short for my liking. Now earlier I had talked briefly, had said I had Thanksgiving plans. I did not travel, I'm not traveling. I actually don't really have to travel for holidays because my family lives in the area. At least my, my mom and dad do. And my husband's mom and dad live in the area as well. So we don't have to travel. This year, uh, we do it every other year with my side of the family um, because all of my siblings, I have uh, two sisters and one brother, their spouses, have family that's out of town and I just did that on the outside I'm just jibber jabbing away that's okay we'll trim it um so this year is our year to do Christmas together so Thanksgiving is what we call on our own we won't be meeting up for Thanksgiving with my side of the family 
um, because my siblings will go to their their spouse's families for Thanksgiving, which is all out of town. So we are just on our own, but we decided to just have a little Thanksgiving tomorrow. It's just my husband and I and my two daughters, my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and my sister-in-law's granddaughter. So, oh, and my brother-in-law. Can't forget him. He's coming. So there's like eight of us. It'd be very small, but it'd be fun. But I am blessed. We don't have to travel anywhere, ever. Now my siblings, they do live in town except one. She lives about an hour and a half away. So anytime we do anything family-wise, I mean, it's always really close by, unless we're going to my sister's. But, I mean, an hour and a half in the grand scheme of things is not far at all. Okay. So, I'm probably just going to keep jibber-jabbing along. All you got to do is we've got to add a bead to each of these and also on the bottom. The most time-consuming part, like I said, have a good TV show, a show you want to binge watch. I like to find a show I can just listen to. Actually, you need to visually see it. And I will remember to do it from the inside this time. And as we start to take the pins away, or the clips, it actually gets easier. Less things to get snagged up on. My hands are getting slippery. And I want to thank all that came tonight to be in the holidays, but things are busy. And I said before, I mean, just the stark contrast. They're the exact same fabric. Which one do you like? Put in the comments. <laughs> I know which one I like, and I already mentioned it. And I love, I love fabric ornaments. I have several that I've done over the years, and they are still... My favorite ones to put out on the tree. My girls and I just did that today, actually. I always would decorate during the week of Thanksgiving. Um, I used to work in senior living. And I would have to decorate the entire community. And that's several trees. So I'd always decorate mine first so that I had the most investment in it and I wanted to make it look really nice because by the seventh or eighth tree you start to get tired <laughs> so mine was always done the week of Thanksgiving because I was never able to put out the decorations at the the home until after Thanksgiving starting to come together on the top or bottom it's haven't been decided if it's a top or bottom yet so I keep measuring my finger just so it's about the same all the way around
one more and then we move to the bottom Can anybody out there imagine all the ma amazing color combinations you could do with this? I am. I see. I really like blue. Blues and whites. So there is that and now we will flip it over and do it again on the side I'm gonna get new thread again it's just getting a little short for my taste I would probably if I was sitting down I might go a little bit further We're gonna go with this one. I'm actually just gonna take that one off. So we're gonna do again, fingers face down. Now for time's sake, I'm not gonna have you sit and watch me put the embellishment ones on. Um, like I said, those are strictly for the purposes of looking beautiful because these are already stitched. And it, it also helps just kind of hide hide that but we are going to add some sparkly spray and I mentioned earlier I've used it in several of my projects um, I'm going to put it up on my blog here in the near future I used it I'm making I hope the girls aren't listening <laughs> my girls I made them doll dresses for their dolls and I Loved using the spray to make the fabric glittery when they were finished. So I was gonna, I'm going to be putting that up on my blog soon with some links to some free doll dresses patterns. And since they're doll dresses, they'll stay glittery unless because I won't be washing them because this glitter dust spray I, I think it would wash out correct me if I'm wrong Dawn it's not heat um, I think it would wash out because you don't apply heat to it to set it or anything but sh Dawn can answer that for you Oh wait, no, I didn't. <laughs> There's no bead on there. Don't know where it went. And if you're wondering, this upholstery thread it comes in several colors. It's you know it doesn't come in all the colors of the rainbow like like your regular threads do, like for sewing, but. Um, this brand 
does come, I believe, and I've seen it in like a navy, black, cream, white, red, and a green is what I believe I've seen it. I stick with the black and the cream or black and the white. It usually works on most projects. Now next month, I have a project idea in mind, but reaching out to you all, if you have a request for either a type of project or a type of product that you've seen with ThermaWeb that you're curious about and would like something to be made with that, please comment it. I would love to know what you'd like to see. And that live is at, is after the holidays, or I guess it's in that it's in that no man's land week, the week between Christmas and New Year's, that nobody knows what day it is. So we'll make sure we have lots of reminders <laughs> of when it's going on. It's the twenty seventh of December. Oops, something got snagged there, but. We'll just try to hide it. Three, one, two, yep, three more to go. Woo. I'm also imagining with these, like what else could be done? I mean, they're beautiful like this, but I love ornaments that have like the dangly, pretty like chandelier look. And I'm, you know, I wonder if you could add like, like one of those like plasticky, it looks almost like a big rhinestone to the bottom. That would be gorgeous. These are my absolute favorite, by the way. They're just back to school kids, Fiskers. They are, surprisingly they will cut fabric, but I don't use them like my fabrics. You know, these are a no to paper, no to anything else. These will cut fabric and they'll also cut paper. So in a pinch, I always use these if I can. They're starting to get a little sweaty. <laughs> Sorry about that. We got one more, and then we'll be adding our hanger. I 
And as you can see, it's not taking that long to really do this. And the, uh, the circle part that we did earlier, the sewing, do that in assembly line fashion. If you're making more than one, do them all at the same time. You can make several. These are a great gift, all for handmade gifts. prepping it for what we're going to do next. So you'll need to have something for your hanger. This is 15 inches of gross grain ribbon. And we are going to tie it in a knot. You can make the hanger as uh, long as you want. I like to keep like a nice tail on it. So, that about equal. Cause this we're going to actually, we're gonna insert it down in there and we're going to stitch it all together to reinforce it. But quick look before we add that. Beautiful. You could even, um, as you can see, the this inside is still hidden. You probably could stitch these the opposite direction. So where the green part is in here and the white part is in here, that would be a completely different look. Would look probably pretty neat. And just because you're, uh, the part you ripped with the seam ripper, it would still be hidden in the center there. If you were worried, you could always attach it to the uh, the fleece with some fabric glue. So we're going to insert our hanger down into the center. And there's really no rhyme or reason on how to stitch this in. We're going to start by taking our thread. I'm just going to start it it through this way and I'm going to go through the base of the ribbon and then I'm going to go through the one exactly opposite straight across keep pushing that down in there and I'm going to go back through the ribbon again but I'm going to go to the next one so not straight across over to this one. See how I'm starting to pull it together? Then I'm going to go back through the ribbon to the one straight across from that. So we're kind of doing like a this figure, kind of like a loops around, just going back and forth into the ri ribbon each time. And I just pulled my needle off. And if you need to, just push the bottom of the ribbon down. So again, we're gonna go, we're coming out this one down here. We're gonna go back through the bottom of the ribbon, but instead of going straight across, we're gonna go to the one next to it over here. And you're just gonna keep repeating the same step until you've gone through all six pieces. I'm not sure. I think I have. I've gone through all six and see how that pulls that tight and so it looks really nice. And then you'll just, you can go through a few more times if you want, if you feel like extra securing it. I'm going to go through one more time and then I'm just going to tie it off.
gonna slide it in like we did with everything else. Pop it through and step. There it is. And I'm going to finish it by doing the same thing on the bottom. Now you can leave it open if you'd like, but we really want those petals to kind of open up. So we're going to do the same thing on the bottom, but we're gonna have a bead on the bottom as our midpoint. And my string is too short again. I'm going to start the bead I'm actually going to put on last as kind of like the finishing touch. So I go in and I'm going to come over to the one right across it. And I'm not going to pull it tight yet because I want you to see this. And then I'm going to go over here to the next one next to it. It's going to create like a little star. And then I'm going to go to the one across from it. And then I'm going to come over here to the one and go across. Now that I've gone in through all six, it's kind of a star. I don't want you to want to try to hold it, pull it tight. I'm going to go one more time right across. Like that. And bead. Not necessary, but pretty. I like pretty. If you put a bigger bead, one that has like a larger hole, then you could actually attach like a a slip ring, and that's where you can then add any danglies that you want. So this seed bead is not going to help in that matter, but and a slip ring for jewelry, it's just like a metal ring that you can open. to attach other pieces to it. All right, so I'm just gonna tie it off. I like to do that twice. And there it is. But we're not finished yet. Like I said, we're not going to, I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me stitch on each of these beautiful embellishments. Um, you've already watched me stitch 12, 13, 14 times. Um, so, but we're not done yet. We are going to add the final touch, which is the glitter. I love the glitter. Who doesn't love glitter and sparkly things for Christmas? So since I use the gold beads, I'm going to use the gold glitter dust spray. They also have a silver and they also have an iridescent. All right, 
I'm going to let it dry. And the glitter dust spray actually is really beneficial to the ornament because it actually stiffens it a little bit, which helps in the durability of the ornament. I'm gonna go back over to my sewing space. And Dom's gonna, I guess, pick our winners. And I'll see if there's any other questions. Thank you all again so much. I know it could be tedious watching me hand stitch a bunch of things, but They're really pretty, and I appreciate you all sticking sticking with me here and watching tonight. All right, she announced our winners, Karen and Missy. Thank you, congratulations. And once again, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. I hope, you know, I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving tomorrow or whatever day they plan on celebrating. Um, and again, thank you for joining. This will be uh, on our Facebook page, so you can rewatch it if you need assistance. It will also be linked up to our YouTube channel for additional watching. So everyone have a great night. Thank you. I'm going to keep it open for just a couple minutes and then I'll be ending the video. Everyone have a good night.